He's making a mothership right now. He's making a mothership right now. He is making a mothership right now. He is making a mothership right now, dude. I cannot believe this. Justice has arrived. Dude, Justice is here. Oh, he's gonna run right into him. He's gonna run. <laughs> That's Halo Network. Wow, dude! Yes. Huck for the win, baby! Huck! Huck! Huck fighting! Woo! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sebastian Koberg, and I'm almost as tired as I look. But did that clip not just bring an epic grin to your happy nerd face? This is GG Vision number 5. Today we're going to look at some of the recent big ass tournaments within the StarCraft world, just for the sake of it. And we're going to talk and think about the importance of showmanship within esports. How crucial it is to not just win, but to have a personality when you do so, in order to be a star and a professional gamer. There's more to it than uh, just making the opponent GG. It's evidently so much better and crowd-pleasing when you can do so with a bit of style. But before we go into that anymore, let's have a second, better look at the game we just saw a clip from here, eternalized by legendary StarCraft commentator Moltrap. This is Huck vs. Select from MLGDC. There he stems, he runs in, he comps that. What is my mouse doing? Force fields going up, trapping half of the army, it, well actually even just a third of the army inside so he can kill him off very quickly. Nicely done. The mothership of course, oh what does he, what does he do? He just forfects his, his whole own army. That's, I guess to stop him from getting close enough to his army. Now he's going to be able to pick off this um, uh, bunker, but I think he may have accidentally walked some of his army in there, in, in, unintentionally there. Uh, unless he was just trying to pin down that one. Comsat going off as soon as the Vortex was wears off. He stims and runs in with the Comsats. I don't think he has any Comsats left. He needs to finish things off right now. He's finishing off almost all the Stalkers, though. That Mothership needs to get out of there or it's going to die. Actually, there's not really. There's only a couple of Marines underneath, so that one Marine is not going to be able to uh, do that much damage on its own. Now, you can't argue with the fact that that was a very, very cool move by Huck. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that... Starcraft players on a stage fighting a big tournament should be circus animals who just do tricks in order to get geek chills out of the audience. Of course, the important thing is to win, to be a professional player. But if you can do so by capturing the hearts of uh, the spectators, those who enable those events to happen, you're so much better off. Now, that mothership there was... Um, Epically fantastic. It may or may not have been the best strategic move at the time, but among all the great matches we watched at MLGDC, I'm sure this is the one uh, most of us remember the most. However, moving on to the StarCraft feast of the year, the Blizzard mayhem that is BlizzCon in Anaheim, California, that took place just the other week. I wasn't there, some of you surely were. Next year. And the rest of us watched it from afar. We're going to look at some of um, the, in my view, best ones that uh, do capture the moment. And the stardom. Kudos to the Game Station pro for providing this footage. Hey, what's up? This is Day9 here. I'm casting. Yes, you are. Fuck yeah. When do, when do you start casting? I have no idea. Absolutely it not. It looks like there's a match starting right now. Yeah, it's Warcraft 3, I think, first. Oh, okay. Yes. That's what's up with me. <laughs> but for now, I gotta do some pro gamer hunting. I think he has actual working lights. Does he? Yes. Oh my god, he totally does. Wow. That's cool. Do you want one? I do want one. I actually want to be that guy. You want to be that guy? I do. He's plastic. Look at that. Oh my god, there's something projecting on his cheek. <laughs> oh, wow. What is it? It's uh, it's like the HUD. <laughs> you have your ID, right? Oh yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they would know me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Just get, get your stamp of approval. 
hope you brought it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll just we'll just jump back in line and see if people yell at us. So who who did, who did, who did we meet? Who was that hugging husky a second ago? The little one. I know. He's so nice looking too. I'm not gonna start until you guys are screaming like crazy. That was really easy. Plus, I didn't have the power to start the game. So. Dario already has 500 APM. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna break that last off so fast. I'm gonna be going down here to these hellions. That animation, if we could just kill this queen so I could watch that again. That would be great. Um, so he's going to be working here with a bunch of Marines and the Hellions. And right now, Dario got two Queens, and uh, I'm not sure actually what else he has right now. Not a lot to do with three Siege Tanks, it looks like, though. As he does have Overseer, so he will seize the hell out of these units, but not going to be able to actually kill them. The Hatchery is going to go down, and our poor Evo Chamber is going to go down as well. What I am trying to show with these... Uh random clips is not just how cool it would be to go to BlizzCon and be a pro gamer. That's quite uh, evident for everybody watching this. What I'm trying to showcase is how StarCraft 2 players nowadays and uh, esports players in general of course are becoming more than just nerds who are particularly good at a game. They're becoming stars. You can call them idols, icons, people that are revered if not feared in game. And uh, even Husky wrote on his Facebook that his fangirls are way cuter than other people's fangirls. Esports are growing up, and uh, I think that is that is very cool. I think esports with StarCraft 2 at the forefront has the potential to become a very legitimate side of uh, mainstream sports entertainment and I think it should because it enables fair competition uh, disregarding uh, geographical distances gender differences anything everybody can compete it is a great vehicle for sports and competition in order to enable this to grow further we must become better at it being a star with everything that that entails it's definitely something that any aspiring pro gamer will have to think about. Now, as you all know, I'm a huge TLO fan. I hope to meet him in Sweden soon. But uh, it, just to showcase what I mean, let's have another look at his exploits from uh, BlizzCon. This time in-game, TLO versus Sam. This constant uh, repeated fungal growth taking these roaches down a peg or two, but uh, really the fungal growth on the speedlings is just much more effective. TLO at 97 food, Sen up to 132 now, cranking out roaches back at home just to help uh, supplement this force. Lots of fungal growth going down, and as you can see from the roach health, uh, all this red and orange here is certainly taking them down very quickly. Uh, TLO could actually utilize his burrow on his roaches right now. It looks like he's not really thinking about it. Uh, there's no overseer in the area for Sen. Sen actually brought his own spine crawlers over to help with this fight. That is amazing. Five infested Terrans popping out now. Going to try and take out this queen. Queen does drop an infusion on a roach before going down. Now TLO pretty much left with just infestors, queens, and about six or seven roaches there. Trying to take out the rest of these spine crawlers left by Sen, and of course spine colors do just fine an enemy creep, doesn't matter whose creep it is. And so TLO actually wards off that much larger food attack. He's left with 88 food uh, supply army, and Sen down to only 75, so wow, that was a huge... There we go. If you haven't watched any of these matches, or if you want to re-watch them with uh, different casters, such as Ash Joshi, links are down there in the description. As always, I do recommend it. What I would like to be showing you right now is of course clips from the GSL, the GOM TV Season 2, which currently is in their semi-final stages, but if I show you videos from there, I would be sued back to the Brood War era and this would no longer exist. But that broadcasting station is obviously the best when it comes to StarCraft 
currently and I'm sure will remain so for years because of course they have an infrastructure that no other tournament organizer or indeed YouTuber could ever compare with. So obviously that's the best place for StarCraft 2 professional gaming right now. It enables stars to grow and uh, legends to be born. Having said that, those legends sometimes fly overseas and do compete at BlizzCon. So here we are with Fruit Dealer, the winner of the GSL Season 1 against the Terran Emperor Slayer's Boxer who is currently doing very very well in GSL Season 2. Here we go, kudos to Bergback. Boxer really needs to expand, putting the scan down, seeing nothing there, of course, nothing able to shoot up right now uh, for Boxer, or not Boxer, for Fruit Dealer, except for these Mutas, and of course, the Mutas, wow, the Mutas went down really fast there, uh, all these stores just doing what they can on damage, and Fruit Dealer just having tons of units, look at all these Bane's coming down, exploding, look at that, exploding all over the units, just taking out what he can, like all, basically all, a boxer's units right there. The only thing Boxer has left is uh, is all of these Banshees and of course just lifting up what he can of the units because he knows well those Banshees can't do anything and more Thor is coming in. Oh he does see it. He does see that uh, Medivac coming around. So yeah look at this. We are sending all the Roaches up. Going to start doing some kind of attack as the Thor is now attacking. Oh burrowing! Burrowing all of his drones. Taking out that Queen though as uh wow as he as all the roaches is coming up a little too late here but uh trying to do some kind of damage taking that overlord to get out of there and this thor just able to do what he oh look at this in range gonna start taking out that hatchery little by little as he can and oh my goodness we are gonna see that and uh start attacking it and that thor almost dead yet again Limio One, Slayer's Boxer, the one and only, always bring a nerd smile to my happy face. He may not have won that tournament, but he sure as hell always puts on a good show. Speaking of which, I'm going to show you an old Brood War clip uh, of precisely that, but of a completely different kind. That is one way of doing it, not necessarily what I want to see, but uh, sometimes... Um, if you don't have a king, you do need a clown. Some of you will laugh and remember this and cringe. Others will probably just be very, very confused. Before we do that, uh, allow me to say a few things. I want to apologize for uh, being so late with this broadcast. I've been a bit supply blocked uh, last week, started a new job, working only nights, yes, etc, etc. But more importantly, I also got some other new exciting things in the works. Polygon Review is going places. I will be lending my efforts uh, to assist another very exciting esports endeavor, which will be launching uh, within a week or two from now, I can guarantee you that this channel will stay the same. In fact, uh, it will be more consistent and more regular. I want to do some commentary of my own. There will be written articles and continued interviews and other GG Vision like content. So just bear with me. Things are in the works. Next time, we are going to talk about the GSL. Even though I can't show you videos from there, we are going to look at it. I'll just have to figure something out. So, do stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'm Sebastian Hoberg. This is Firebat Hero after defeating the Meister of Zerg. See you next time. GG and out.